Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repair. Happy Easter everybody. And today we've got a special one that I've been saving. This is a really crazy old uh, 1979 lawsuit era Japanese guitar. This is a fresher, straighter Proteon series um, FS682. And it's got a bunch of actual analog built in like 70s effects. It's quite cool. All right, let's check it out. All right, so I picked this one up locally and uh, it's just a really cool, rare, old Japanese guitar. So yeah, there it is. So this is a fresher, straighter Proteon series FS682 in silver metallic. So these are right about the age of the, the lawsuit guitars. Um, that's when a lot of Japanese guitars were making very similar copies to Fender and Gibson. So same era. And uh, Fresher started out in the early 70s as kind of a more budget brand. They were cheaper kind of guitars, but then toward the end of the 70s, they started getting really high quality and putting in some really wild specs and features into their guitars. So this guitar is a rarer version. It's the stop tail version, so there's no trim in this. And uh, yeah, it's got a whole bunch of built-in effects in this guitar. So you've got your normal three pickups but then you can bypass that and then get into your effects section that has its own separate volume and tone. And then it's got a sustainer or distortion, um, a phaser and an auto wah. And these are actual analog pedals built into the guitar. Um, they're routed right into the back. So original like 70s style pedals built right into the guitar, which is really, really cool. And uh, the body of this is like a Sen ash, like a, um, a Japanese wood. And then you've got our single coils, just like a Strat. I plugged it in and actually the single coils sound great on this, like just a proper vintage style Strat. And then it's got a rosewood fingerboard, kind of like reflector inlay there. And then a 70s style, bullet style truss rod with a bone nut and a very 70s like large headstock with uh, the vintage style machines. And uh, yeah, this guitar is in really great shape for how old it is. It's got some checking on it, which makes me think it might be a nitro finish or it might went through some temperature things. Uh, so yeah, here's the back cavities, which is, um, this model is a little different than the trim one because the trim would have your trim cavity and they just had a really big pick guard that covered everything. This one, they kind of had two separate ones. And I haven't opened this up yet, so I'm, I'm interested to see how it looks on the inside. And just that really cool gray metallic silver finish. I've got made in Japan badge there. And then it looks like a one piece maple neck with uh, our vintage style machine heads. It's a really cool guitar. I did plug it in before I bought it and everything works and it sounds really wild. So I'm interested to th see what uh, is underneath the pickguard on this. So let's go ahead and get it on the bench and get some parts and specs and look underneath the hood. All right, here we are on the bench. First things first, I'm curious what this thing looks like underneath the hood. So I'm going to take off the strings. They're old. They should be replaced anyway. And then uh, we'll take the neck off. We'll take the pickguard off. Uh, we'll take the back panels off and we'll just have a peek at what's going on in this thing.
All right, I want to be very careful during this process because this thing works and it's pretty old, so, and it's likely probably pretty complicated underneath the hood. I don't want to mess something up and have it not work when I put it back together. So I'm going to go slow. I've never taken one of these apart before, so it appears to be lifting. Oh, okay. And yeah, that's what I was a little bit of afraid of because it's all just tightly wired and it looks crazy under here. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm going to, yeah, that's about as far as I'm going to go because I have no idea what I'm looking at here. I'm going to try to get a good look at this and put it back very carefully without touching anything because this is wild. All right. So yeah, as you can see, it's all analog wiring and there's a ton of stuff going on. Um, there's a look at our pickups. Looks like the whole pick guard is shielded and they're vintage style looking pickups. They're using full size pots and the rest is just a wiring nightmare. As far as the cavities go, it looks like they're shielded cavities, um, shielding paint, you can't really see what kind of wood it is. Again, it's supposed to be that Sen Ash wood, but the routes look clean. And yeah, I'm just gonna try to very carefully put this back into place without messing anything up. And again, I have no idea what I'm looking at. There's just way too much going on for me to make heads or tails of it. All I know is it works. And just put it back together, testing it to make sure it works. So it looks like the normal pickups work. The controls work, and then the effects. Yeah, you can tell they're working. There's some wild stuff this thing can do. So that's great. Uh, I didn't cock anything up. All right, here's a look at the back. Um, more electronics back here. They couldn't fit everything under there. So they stuffed a little bit more in there. And uh, it looks like it uses three AA batteries to, to work. I don't know if that's a modification, although, I mean, that's the size of the route. So yeah, I, I, I imagine that's stock. So yeah, if you need to change the batteries, there's two screws. There's actually little uh, receivers into the screw too because you're going to be taking that out a lot. So you, if it was just a standard wood screw, you, that would degrade over time and then become loose. But So they put little receivers in there, so that's pretty cool. And then you just plop uh, three AA batteries in there. And then, yeah, there's a look at our back route. And it's a string through design, so that's where you put your strings. Pretty neat. All right, here's a look at our neck pocket. So yeah, nothing to write home about in there. Just looks like a standard neck pocket. There's no factory writing at all. Uh, there's no shims or anything, so that's cool. And then here's a look at our neck. Again, no writing at all, but uh, it appears to be well constructed. One thing I did notice is uh, look how thin of a strip of rosewood is on there. Usually it's Quite a bit thicker but this is a very very thin strip of rosewood however it does look great it might even be brazilian uh because it's really got those red streaks in there and uh in this era japanese guitars were known for using brazilian rosewood so uh, i'll have to do a little bit more research on that but yeah it definitely does look like a brazilian rosewood and let's check to see the fit of the neck so, yeah, it's a nice tight fit with not a lot of room to move in there. So it's a pretty nice tight fitting neck pocket. So even with all those electronics still weighing in at a pretty nice weight at seven pounds, 13.2 ounces or 3.55 kilograms. I'm sure all the electronics are messing with the readings a little bit, but if we do in the bypass mode, our pickups are reading a 4.35 in the bridge a 5.86 in the middle position and a 5.88 in the neck 
Now if I switch to effects, that makes it jump up to 12.8 and it reads the same in every position. So whatever's happening with that effects, it, it's boosting the signal quite a bit, even with all the effects off. So, interesting. Neck depth at the first fret is a 0.83 mil uh, inches and 21.21 millimeters. And at the 12th fret, that's a 24.4 millimeters or a 0.96 inches. And here's a look at our neck profile. So it's kind of a, kind of like a soft V. It's a little bit more um, sharp at the top there. And it does flatten out a little bit by the 12th fret. So yeah, it's kind of a soft V profile. So yeah, this guitar was only available in Japan. It was never exported. So it does have that uh, Japanese style neck, which is quite thin and uh, narrow. All right, managed to get quite a nice setup on this 79 Fresher. So using this notch straight edge, you can see that there is very little space between the notch straight edge and the fingerboard. So that tells us that the neck is nice and straight and the truss rod is nice and tight. And then here in the third fret, when I use this at third fret, you can see that the string is just resting almost directly on that first fret. So that tells us the action here is really nice. The neck is straight, the truss rod's tight and our nut is cut really well. And then here at the 12th fret, we can see that our action on the low E is about a 1.25. And our action on the high E is between a 0.75 and a 1. So yeah, nice, very low action on this. And these Japanese guitars tend to have really low frets. And that is the case on this guitar. All right, I'm just gonna quickly go through the whole fretboard and make sure there's no fretting out or buzzing anywhere. I like to speed up this part, but if you wanna hear it in real time, just slow down the player to 25%. So yeah, very nice low action with uh, no buzzing or fretting out anywhere. And uh, yeah, no fret sprout on this guitar either. Plays really nice and the neck feels good. All right, let's go ahead and plug it in and hear how it sounds. All right, I'm plugged into my 1965 Fender Bassman. I'm just gonna run over the pickups, get some tones clean and dirty, and then we'll switch over to the effects portion and uh, just do a couple riffs with uh, each one of the effects.
right, very nice vintage Strati clean tones. Uh, I find the bridge pickup is a lot weaker than the other two, even though it's up pretty high, so I'm not sure what that is. It still sounds good, but there's a definite uh, drop in volume on that back pickup. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and try it out with a little bit of overdrive. <laughs> So now I'm going to try out these onboard effects. Um, so basically, yeah, these are like built-in stomp pedals from the 70s. Um, and we've got a couple different things. Sustain slash distortion here on this toggle. And then we've got a phaser. Um, and then an auto wah. So I'm going to use them all independently and then just combinations of all to get some good sounds.
Final thoughts on the 1979 Fresher Straighter Proteon Series FS682 in metallic silver. It's a fun guitar. It's uh, it's cool. It's uh, it's got some nice vintage Strat sounds out of here. For some reason, the bridge pickup seems a little weak, but um, you can compensate with that by uh, lowering the other pickups. Uh, I got them nice and even now, um, but. Yeah, all those built-in effects are just crazy. You get some really, really cool vintage sounding like 70s effects. You get a really nice sustainer and distortion effect in there that's quite usable. The phaser was really great too. The Ottawa was a little hard to dial in. However, in some positions it was rather usable. If you use all three at once, I mean, it's kind of just a big mess. Um, but I'm sure you could use it for something. There was some usable tones in there in every position and in every combination. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just really, really kind of powerful what you can do with this guitar. You get all your normal uh, tones out of the, the bypass switch. And then you can really get crazy with some of the, the effects that are built right in. So um, if you got really good with dialing all this in, you can get some crazy tones out of this thing. And uh, yeah, it's just really unique. Uh, the neck feels great. It feels like a proper old like um, V profile fender neck. And the fretwork was really good on this guitar. It plays nice and low with no buzzing or fretting out anywhere. And uh, yeah, the body is that um, Sen Ash. Uh, it's nice and light, it's not too heavy. It plays great, it sounded really good. And uh, yeah, it just really seems like a really high quality guitar too. The machine heads uh, seem very, very high quality. Stay in tune really well. Bone nut, yeah, Brazilian rosewood fingerboard. And um, all the components on the inside look really high quality too. It's, it's really, really, really complicated underneath the hood like I showed. Um, if a wiring issue ever uh, arose, you'd need to have a really good luthier who knows what they're doing. Probably even an Amptec 
to uh, to fix it for you. Um, but yeah, these are really cool guitars. They're they're getting pretty rare these days. I really like the the color as well. That silver metallic with the cream pick guard or pickup covers and the black pick guard with all the the stuff on it looks really cool. And um, yeah, I was just I was I picked it up not really expecting much. I thought it was going to be more of a novelty than anything, but um, I was really surprised with you know the overall quality of the guitar, how well it played, and uh, the quality of the effects as well. They sounded uh, quite vintage, cool '70s effects um, that you can really dial in. So yeah, really cool guitar. I believe it's a nitro finish as well because it's starting to check in a couple areas, which is again a plus. But yeah, quite neat. But that's going to be it for today. Thank you for tuning in to Beckler Guitars and Repair, and I'll have more for you really soon. Thanks a lot.